Welcome to Agape Kids Church. You are tuned into the At Kids Total Kids Worship Service. This service is for our students ages 6 to 12 years old. Our lesson for today is titled Father's Day and will be led by ministers Kyle and Ken. All my Agape Kids, get ready, get set, and let's go learn how to love like him. Good morning. Hi. Welcome to our At Kids Total Worship Service. I'm Minister Kyle. And I'm Minister Kim. And we want to start out by saying, Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day. Woo hoo! Yeah, it's good for the days. <laughs> I guess they deserve a day. <laughs> so, um, before we get started, we want to start with our opening prayer. So, if we get you all to bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity, bringing us here to be in your presence on this Father's Day, God. And we ask that you let your Holy Spirit move in and speak to the children and speak to us, Lord, also, as we focus on what it means to be a father and what it means for you, God, to be our father and how you influence our lives and protect us and do all those fatherly things from heaven and how you set an example for us here on earth. We thank you, God, for all you do for us. And we thank you for all the time <clears throat> that we get to spend learning about you. We ask that you make this lesson today meaningful to our children, that they can apply it in their lives, and they can go forth happy, Lord, thinking about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So with that, I wish that I could have seen you guys dancing to Father Abraham during that praise and worship, because we used to have so much fun when we put that song on. Definitely. We put it in there hoping that you guys would get up and dance, you know, and a mom with this little dance like this. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously both of our songs today were about fathers because that is what we're going to focus on today. We're going to take a little break from our June lesson, even though Miss Trinia did an awesome job. She taught us what is forgiveness, why we should forgive people, and why we should apologize, and how hard that really is to do, but how important it is for the other person as well as yourself. And then she gave us that great story about Joseph forgiving people so he could have peace within himself. So we'll get back to that next week. But for now, we are going to do some Father's Day crafts today. Yes! So, Father's Day, give it up for the dead. If you are at drive-in service, hopefully you got one of these as you came in. And we're going to walk you through how to do that. If not, if you're at home, you'll want a piece of paper, maybe some markers, and definitely your Bible. So, we'll give you a few seconds to go get those things together. All right, so today, as we've said, we're celebrating Father's Day, right? And it's a special day for dads out there, and it's a special day for anybody who is that father figure in your life. So... Um, it could be a celebration of your father, your actual father, like I have my kids, hey, those are my kids, or maybe an uncle, or a pastor, or a minister, or... A teacher, a coach, anyone who, who fulfilled that father role in your life and gave you some good motivation and some good advice, and they helped you get through life. Definitely, and then ultimately it's a celebration of our Heavenly Father, who we know is God up there in heaven looking down, and He's also one of our fathers. So. It's, uh, it's really a celebration of all those things, and especially our Heavenly Father. Today's verse for the day is going to come out of 1 Corinthians 16 and 13, and Minister Kyle is going to read it for you. Yes, and if you have one of these, it's right on the bottom. You can look at it. So from 1 Corinthians 16 13, it says, Stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. I don't know about you, Mr. Kim, but that sounds like, that reminds me of, like, dads, right? Everybody thinks their dad, thinks of their dad as being courageous and strong and brave. Definitely. Um, Whenever we need a pickle jar open, we go to the dad. <laughs> if you don't have that sheet, I'm going to be writing it on here, and I think you should do the same. That way, whoever you decide to give this to will know what verse it came from. So again, it was stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. That's 1 Corinthians 16, 13. And if you don't have it in front of you, you can find it right in your Bible. It's in there. So for our activity today, there's a couple things we're going to go through. And we're going to talk about each, um, each little thing. So if you look at this, uh, anybody who has this in front of them, 
kind of laid out for you and we have these cool little uh, stickers that we're going to add to them. And we're going to talk about each one as we go through. And you'll see how it really incorporates some attributes of a good father along with the word father. So the first one we're going to talk about is this first word across the top, which is going to be faithful. And if you don't have that, I would start with writing father down the center of the page. And then as we go through each description about what a good father is, you can fill it in across. So with that first one, we're going to be adding the word faithful. We're going to take the F and we're going to drop it in there into our word faithful. And on your paper, you might want to do something cool, like maybe highlight the word, uh, the F that's going to be in father, or maybe underline it. You could do a different color. Um, something to make it stand out and make it special. And also to add to that, we're going to talk about some dads in the Bible. So faithful, for our faithful, we, we chose uh, Joseph. And if you don't know, Joseph was the father of Jesus here down on earth. We all know that God was Jesus' father. But let's talk about the faith that Joseph had to have when he found out that Mary, his soon-to-be uh, wife, was going to be having Jesus, the son of God. Now, that's got to be a lot of pressure, right? Absolutely. And, and, and Joseph actually was a little scared at times. But an angel spoke to him and said that he's going to marry. Uh, he's going to marry Mary. They're going to raise Jesus. He's going to be the Son of God. They're going to name him Jesus, and he's going to be the Messiah who saves us all. And I don't know about you, but that takes a lot of faith. And it took a lot of faith for Joseph to go ahead and do that and trust in God and raise Jesus. And we all know, like Jesus is pretty special. Like, imagine, um, like, it'd be tough to raise any kind of, like, prodigy, like a kid who's really good at something, or, like, Michael Jordan growing up was probably, like, really accelerating, and you're like, man, I gotta do a lot to stay on top of this. Well, imagine raising Jesus, you know, raising the Messiah. Like, that's a pretty big, important idea, uh, ordeal. So, Joseph really showed some faith in that. So, faithful is definitely something we want from our fathers. It's good, and then it can help lead us into our faith and help us become more faithful. Yes, definitely. Showing that they can follow God and, and lead us to do the same. The next word down is going to be brave. We're going to go ahead and place that A for brave. I didn't know. And I wrote my word brave. That's nice. You're doing a great job. <laughs> so brave. Um, if we want to talk about a brave father in the Bible, we chose... David. Ooh, David. And anybody knows anything about David, I think about David and Goliath, right? So David, who was just a small little shepherd, is just the smallest of his brothers and just took care of some like sheep. Uh, when he showed up and he saw Goliath, the giant who was 10 feet tall, yeah, he didn't even, he's also kind of faithful, but let's talk about brave. He knew that God had his back. He went out to face the giant with some stones and a slingshot. And he literally slayed the giant. Little old tiny David. They actually looked at David like, this guy's going to do this? <laughs> and he still did it. And then beyond slaying Goliath, he also trusted God. And he was fleeing from Saul. And he was doing God's work in a lot of uh, a lot of different ways. He really showed his bravery. So I like to think of my dad being brave, right? You want somebody. Somebody's going to break in and take something. You're like, who's going to protect me? That's my dad. He's brave. Or if a spider crawls in the room. <laughs> and then God get it. <laughs> the next word is going to be patient. Patience, we have talked about before. And it is hard. But we definitely want a father who's going to be patient. So when we were thinking, we thought of Noah. Mm, definitely. And Noah, when we think of Noah, we think of Noah and the ark. Yes, he had to build an ark. And I was doing some reading about um, about Noah and how long he even took to build an ark. Like, picture, it's dry, it's not raining, and God tells you that he wants you to build a gigantic boat over 500 feet long that's going to fit, uh, you know, your family and every one and two of every animal on the planet. And you got to think, wow, this is a pretty big task, God. And Noah showed great patience in continuing to work and build, and I think it took him... You know, it's hard to measure time, I guess, when we're talking about Bible standards, but Noah started building it sometime around he was 500, and he finished building it sometime around being 600, so somewhere between, like, 70 and 100 years, it took him to build this ark. Like, can you imagine building something for almost 100 years? That's some real patience. And what we know is that Noah built the ark, he followed God, he, he showed his patience, 
And in the end, he saved humanity because God flooded the earth. And, he, and you know, he started again with Noah and his family. And if we had fathers who weren't patient, then I think we would be not as good of children. Because it's nice to know that you can make a mistake or you can take your time doing something or you can question something. And your father will have the patience to help guide you through it and lead you to where you're supposed to be. Our next word is truthful. And now this is great for a father figure or for any of us, obviously, because being truthful is a great attribute to have. And I mean, this is pretty simple, truthful, meaning you want somebody to tell you the truth and you want them to never lie to you. And that's the great thing about a good father is that he's always going to be truthful. And sometimes the truth hurts and sometimes the truth is uplifting. But the truth always comes with love and it should always come from love with your father. So when you think about your father figures, think about, you know, when we think back and we smile a little bit, like a lot of times we're like, yeah, he's somebody who is truthful. And our fathers usually give us a lot of advice. So if we're believing their advice to be truthful and then we go out in the world and use it and it's not truthful advice, we could end up hurt or in trouble or doing something we shouldn't be doing. So it's good that we can trust our father figures. All right, we're gonna keep going because we're almost there. We got two more. The next one is clever. And if you're looking on here, clever, we're gonna drop that E in there. So our father's being clever. And I looked up the definition of clever, if you're not certain. And it talks about being intelligent, skillful, being able to apply ideas or even come up with new ideas. So um, I don't know about any of you, but like I had a dad growing up who oftentimes could take ideas and turn them into something or maybe build something. I saw him fix a lot of things with his bare hands. Um, and even not necessarily just fixing things, but being able to apply ideas to our lives and make us better. And I even think of some fun stuff that's kind of clever, like turning an old cardboard box into a fun car that you can play with, or turning a stick into a fun toy. And I think dads are really clever, or father figures, excuse me, are really clever with coming up with those things so that we can turn something old into something new and fun. Our last word is heroic. And definitely, I feel like as a teacher, sometimes we ask our students, who is your hero? And so many times the students say their father. And to me, that's a really good thing because that means they have a good father figure in their life. Kind of like Moses. Yeah, definitely. If you know anything about Moses in the Bible, and if you don't, I'll give you a little, a little summary. Moses pretty much, well, he helped to, to save his people, to get the Jews out of Egypt and to save all of his people. And you want to talk about heroic. I mean, he walks up to the Pharaoh and he's like, hey, Pharaoh, like, you got to let my people go. Um, if you don't, if God tells him to do this, and he's like, we're going to bring plagues, my God is going to do this, my God's going to do that. Um, and again, really showing some faith, but he was a hero to walk in. Can you imagine walking into essentially the king and being like, hey, you're going to let my people go because God said so. And then actually leading your people out when Pharaoh let them go. And then beyond that, he had to continue to lead them. He had to lead them across the Red Sea. He had to lead them. Um, through when they stumbled through the wilderness. So, like, talk about a real hero figure. He was somebody they looked to to save them, and God put him in that place. So he's a real hero in my eyes. Absolutely. So if you are at home, you, I added a few little things on here. A heart, a cross. I wrote Love Kim at the bottom, so whoever I give it to can remember who it came from. And if you're at drive-in service and you have one of these crafts, it has little figures you can stick on there. So while he does that, I'm just going to go back to the beginning and remind you guys that God is our Father, and He is the Father of all, and He has all the attributes we talked about plus more. He's faithful, He's truthful, He's heroic, but He's also loving and constant. He's our provider and our protector. He's a great example for all of our earthly fathers. So we have to remember that above all, God is there for us. And sometimes if we feel like we can't turn to our earthly father or we don't know who to turn to, we can remember that everything God has for us is in the Bible. So we can always go back there if we have any confusion. Definitely. And again, just to kind of reiterate, like he is that perfect example. And I know as I try to be a better father for my own family, I turn to God and all the things that he has to offer me in, in his Bible and his word, all his sets of direction to help me be like him and be faithful, brave, patient, truthful, clever, and heroic. And I know that God is that ultimate example. And you know, if you don't have a real father figure in your life, 
He's always somebody you can turn to. I, I, I maybe I'm gonna rephrase that. You do have a father figure in your life. Absolutely. And even if you if it's not here on earth, you have God. He is your heavenly heavenly father, and he can be all those things for you. So today and every day, but especially today, make sure you give that father figure in your life or all of the father figures in your life some thanks. And maybe you want to give them your little crap, pick one and give it to them, or make multiple ones, that's fine too. And when you're saying your prayers, make sure you thank God for being your father and for guiding you to the best version of yourself. So that's a... <laughs> that's it. That's what we got. Oh. And next week, Minister Trini will be back with you guys. So I know she always has something fun and exciting. She's way more exciting than we are. So that'll be fun to look forward to for next week. So we're going to close out in prayer. Everybody, uh, all eyes closed, all heads bowed, so we can close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today. We ask that you continue to bless our children, God, and that you continue to be our Heavenly Father. And you continue to show us and be an example of how fathers are faithful, brave, patient, truthful, clever, and and heroic. We know that you are our protector, Lord, that you're our provider, and that as you continue to be examples for us, we can be examples for our children, and our children will grow into people to be examples for their children, God, as we know that you are the true Heavenly Father. We ask that you help us to stand firm in the faith, be courageous, and be strong, just like our Bible verse said today. We ask that you continue to watch over us, watch over our children, watch over their parents, be with our families, and continue to let us hear from you each and every day. We ask that you put a special blessing on all the fathers, God, who are out there, because this is their special day and their special moment, and a moment for us to just say thank you. Thank you for being a father. Thank you for all the hard work, and thank you for being there for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye. Happy Father's Day. Woo-hoo, Dad. <laughs>